Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We welcome you to this video for at-home worship on Easter 2021 from the Second Reformed Church in Pella, Iowa. And we are glad that you are joining us in this time. Whether you are a lifelong member of this congregation or you are somewhere far from Pella, we are glad that you are here. And we trust that in these next few minutes, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will visit you through this time of video. If you watch regularly, you know we have a good crew and we always thank them. But today we're gonna to make it a little different and we're gonna say, together as a crew, we send our Easter greetings to you. So on behalf of Jim Emmert and Lauren Blom, Chris DeWild, the Central College students, Pastor Katie, Pastor Sophie, I'm Pastor Steve, we wish you a blessed and a joyful Easter from Second Reformed Church. And now, as we often do, we encourage you to take a deep breath, maybe sit up just a little bit more, and let us together prepare to worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us new life and hope. God has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. God has brought us out of darkness and has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All creation join to say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and try. Let us pray together. Like a banner planted on a hilltop, proclaiming your ownership of the land, O oh God. The flowers of spring are a witness, each bloom shouting from the earth that death is a lie, that beauty and life are what we are made for. As the flowers declare a kingdom of peace, joy, beauty, and love, we celebrate today the resurrection of Christ, declaring that death has been conquered and life will win, not only for one season, but for every season. And just as Mary thought Jesus to be the gardener, tending life among the dead, may we always find you, Creator God, tending seeds of the resurrection in the earth around us. Amen.
Children, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. You know how on Easter we say this back and forth, and Christians have done this for ages and ages. Let's do it one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Do you like it when it's dark? I don't know. I'm not always so keen on the dark. It can be scary. And even with the fire here, it's really cold now. I remember once when I was very scared and I was in the dark and I said, I remember shouting, would somebody just please turn on the lights? The Easter story begins in the dark. Very early on Sunday morning, Jesus' friends went to check on his tomb. They didn't expect anything special. They were just going there because their friend was dead and they were sad. But they got up early. It was still dark. They were scared. They were sad. And when they got there, they had the biggest surprise anyone has ever had in all time. The tomb was empty and Jesus was alive. And that's a beautiful story, and it changes the way we look at life. That life goes on because Jesus rose. And we die, but we know that we will live because Jesus lives. But the story begins in the dark. And that tells me that sometimes when we're scared, when we're alone, when we're in the dark, we can't wait and say, well, when it gets light, I'll do that. Or when I feel happier, I'll try. We start times in the dark. We start sometimes when it's cold, when we're alone. It's not the best, but we go forward. And sometimes when we do that, God surprises us with great things and loving gifts that Christ is alive. Let's do it one more time, shall we? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Great God, we thank you for raising Jesus from the dead and that through that, we and people will live forever and ever. Thank you for that. You know that the dark can be scary and cold and maybe we don't want to get out of bed sometimes. Call us to go forward, trusting that you will surprise us with light and joy and love like you did on that first Easter. Amen. And here is your blessing. You are God's beloved child. With you, God is well pleased. A reading now from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter 
and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as of yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Easter Sunday has long been a favorite of mine. I have such great memories of singing Christ the Lord is risen today at my grandparents' church in New Jersey, the lilies taking over the front of the sanctuary. One year, I went to a sunrise service with my sisters, and the room the service was held in had a wall of windows overlooking the Hudson River, and we had the best view of the sun coming up over the mountains. I can remember getting new pink dresses and eating way too many Reese's peanut butter eggs. A few years ago, the church I attended had the congregation cover a large wooden cross with flowers, and it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. Easter Sunday is so special, such a time of celebration. Similar to last Easter, this year feels a bit different. We are still in a pandemic, our whole church family is not gathered here with us. We have masks on our faces. And as I began to think about preaching today, I couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed that my first Easter sermon doesn't feel super Eastery to me. It still feels a bit dark and gloomy, even as we see signs of spring outside and Vaccines bring hope for an end to the pandemic. And then I read through our scripture passage, the very first sentence. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. 
while it was still dark. There are so many pieces of the Easter narrative that can be preached on and celebrated, but this Easter, I want to sit in this very first moment for a little while. This big, huge, world-changing moment in history happened while it was still dark. This feels right to me this year because honestly, the world still feels dark to me, even on Easter Sunday. Yes, we are getting closer and closer to a life that looks more familiar to us. And still, COVID is bringing death to so many. I am comforted by Mary's arrival to the tomb, prepared for death and darkness. Other gospel writers share that she had come with spices to anoint Jesus' body. She was anticipating to find the stench and the sting of death so strong. As some of you know, learning Hebrew was a deeply formative experience for me in seminary. I loved learning to sing various Hebrew blessings, and even still, I find myself singing them throughout the day. One of my favorites is a blessing for the evening. The translation is this. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who created day and night. You roll away the light from the face of the darkness and the darkness from the face of the light. Blessed are you, Lord, who creates the evening twilight. One of the things I love about this blessing is that it blesses God who created the night. The night, the darkness, does not always need to be scary. Nighttime is not bad. Darkness is not bad. God created it in the very beginning and saw that it was good. Many beautiful things in scripture happen at nighttime or in the darkness. In fact, Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, reminds us that new life always begins in the dark. A seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, and Jesus in the tomb. Can you imagine how dark the tomb was when Jesus first opened his eyes. But there's another thing I love about this particular blessing. When we at Western sing this blessing, it is sung in a three-part round. The music, written by a friend of mine, is quite rhythmic. So between the rhythm of the music And this three-part round, singing the blessing can start to sound a bit like organized chaos. I asked my friend once what inspired her to write this music for the blessing. She told me she was inspired by the sounds of the night. That when she would sit outside in the evening, she would hear cicadas, crickets, frogs, and the wind rustling the trees. The rhythm of life at night, she said, in the darkness is much different than that of the day. This seems like resurrection to me, like some Easter wisdom for us. Mary came to the tomb in the darkness, anticipating to find Jesus three days dead. I imagine she thought it would be silent inside the tomb. Other gospel writers say that some other women were with her, but I can't imagine their conversation that dark early morning was very lively, perhaps only the sound of weeping. And then life in the darkness, the tomb open, angels inside. At first, Mary does not even have eyes to see the miracle. Jesus is standing right in front of her, and she thinks he is the gardener. And perhaps in some ways he is, tending to new life in the darkness, planting hope, 
life and beauty in the midst of what Mary still thought was the darkest of nights. But then, in the midst of it all, Jesus says her name, and instantly she knows. This night is not one of despair or defeat, but of resurrection. I want to pause here for just a moment and be very honest. At the same time, I find comfort and hope in the reality that life can come forth in the darkness, even the darkest of darks. I also find myself a little bit frustrated because unlike Mary, we do not always get to witness the person or the thing we love so dearly come to life again in front of our eyes. Some things really do die. And some things, many things, really do stay dead. And I want us to take a moment and honor that. And still, in that darkness, we look to Mary to guide us. Mary had no idea that she was about to see Jesus beside her, alive and well. She came to the tomb to grieve, to anoint and honor Jesus. We are invited to do the same. We bring the burial spices and our tears to anoint and honor what has died. We continue to love that which is now gone. A person, a dream, the past. Some things die. And sometimes those things stay all the way dead. That does not mean we stop showing up, burial spices in hand, eyes open for a miracle. I've always been struck by the image of the tomb in a garden. A tomb for the dead among all that is alive. It seems so like Jesus to be mistaken for a gardener, doesn't it? Always tending life, no matter how close his proximity to death. I wonder if this Easter we can find the courage to do the same. We have known a year of death and of darkness. We have experienced the death of friends and family members, the death of what we thought was normal. We have grieved canceled plans, missed opportunities to celebrate milestones. And I wonder if in the darkness we might also mistake Or perhaps better yet, we might imagine Jesus as the gardener, greeting us as we show up with burial spices overwhelmed with grief to help us tend the small seeds of life. All while it is still dark. The sounds and rhythms of life in the dark may be different than those in the light, but they exist persisting, calling our attention to the promise of what is still to come. Just as God rolls the light away from the face of the darkness, that same God will roll the darkness away, revealing the light. The promise of the resurrection is that even in the darkness, even when things are dead, even when we are overwhelmed with grief, Even when the tears won't stop, life is coming. Life and love, they always get the final word. Death has been defeated forever. This is not the end. Beloved, on this Easter morning, whether you are feeling the heaviness of night or the joy of the morning, May you encounter Jesus with you, tending to life among the dead. May you have the courage to honor and to anoint that which has died. May you be tuned to the rhythms of life. And may you come alive to the hope of the resurrection this day and every day. In the name of the Father 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of us all. Amen. And now, let us join with all of God's people and say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We've all heard the statement, it is better to give than to receive. And of course, there's a certain sort of truth in it. But in these last few days in our Christian story, we have received so much. We've received a meal. We've received Jesus' humility and service, mercy and forgiveness. We have received what it is to be truly human. We have received a love that is stronger than death, we have received everlasting life. So on this Easter, more than givers, let us see ourselves as recipients, people who have been given much through the love of Christ in these past few days. And honestly, it's when we see ourselves as recipients, as people who have received, that then it becomes easy and natural for us to be givers. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us lift up our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Let us pray. For far too many months, O oh Lord, we have been wearing those itchy hair shirts of burdens and worries. But today you dress us in joy and wonder, and we will wear that every day. For far too many months, O oh Lord, we have been walking timidly through life, alone, apart, afraid. That good and faithful friend, death, always close by, whispering in the silence. But e now even the grave has lost its power. And now a new friend, you, O oh Christ, walk with us. There have been too many nights, O oh Lord, when we have stood emptying our worries out of our pockets, dropping them like pennies into that large jar. But now we can go and cash them all in for all the love, the grace, the joy you offer us in this new day. We could continue to relive all the endless days, but now we will sing and dance and rejoice with you. Still, O oh God, hear our prayers for those still caught in the midst of sickness and death. Today we remember Dale and Kelly and Vera and Michael and the Nelson family. And for whom else shall we pray? Hear our prayers for those who mourn lost relationships lost jobs, lost confidence. Hear our prayers for those who live still in the midst of turmoil or violence or scarcity. 
Christ our life. You are alive in the beauty of the earth, in the rhythm of the seasons, in the mystery of time and space. Alleluia. Christ our life, you are alive in the tenderness of touch, in the heartbeat of intimacy, in the insights of solitude. Alleluia. Christ our life, you are alive in the creative possibility of the dullest conversation, of the dreariest task, and the most threatening event. Alleluia. Christ, our life, you are alive to offer recreation to every unhealed hurt, to every deadened place, to every damaged heart. You set before us a great choice. Therefore, we choose life. We choose you. The dance of resurrection soars and surges through the whole creation. This is grace, that dying we live. So help us to live. And to live with that same prayer on our lips that you, O Christ, taught us. Saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where all death is now thy sting. beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Go in peace. Amen.